In this session we will explore TASMOD in more detail and depth. Um, I'll talk about the policies that are contained within TASMOD and in particular the definitional policies and the tax and benefit policies although in this session we will focus on the tax policies and in the next session we'll spend more time on the benefit policies. First of all it's important to look at the user interface again and here we can see it. The policies are highlighted in the red circle here. That's the actual names of the policies and the names of the policies relate to the output variables and we'll talk about that as we go. The description of the policies is in the comment column to the right and something called the spine which is the ordering of the policies which we'll also talk a bit more about um, as these sessions progress is on the left, far left, it's the actual row numbers. The row numbers are the actual ordering of the policies. Let's just switch across to the actual model and look at that in a bit more detail. Okay, so here's the model as launched. We can open up uh, TASMOD itself and here you are. Here are the actual policies and I'll give you an example of one of the, um, uh, here, here's the income tax policy, one of the policies. It's called TIN underscore TZ and that's because, and I won't go into details of the actual uh, um, functions at this point, but the output variable is TIN underscore S, which is the income tax variable. And that's why the policy is actually called TIN underscore TZ. So here are the actual policies and they're, if you like, TASMOD names. And here's a description of the policies um, in plain English under the comment column. And the ordering of the policies is here, one, which is the uprate policy, through to the uh, 18, which is an output policy. Okay go back to the presentation. So the types of policy where well, we have definitional policies as you saw from the model itself the very first policy is an uprating policy and this is um, an example of a definitional policy. We'll go through the definitional policies in a, in a while in more detail. Then a tax policy income tax, I just showed you income tax, good example of a tax policy and then there are benefits policies and an example of, there, of that is the um, PSSN um, policy. So let's go through the definitional policies. First of all uprating factors, one I showed you Income concepts, tax units, constants, expenditure variables. These are special definitional policies that are required for two specific policies. That's VAT and excise duty, which uh, we'll touch on only briefly in this training. And then the final definition and definitional policy is the output policy, and particularly the output policy at individual level. Now of these policies, one and four will need annual alteration. Um, the uprating factors are factors that contain the um, uh, values by which income within the input data set is uprated. So clearly um, because of inflation, these will go up on an annual basis. So that's one. Four, the constants. Um, the values in the constants, which we will, I'll show you in a minute, um, are things like um, the you know, annual tax exemption 
rates and so forth and they do go up annually and so they will need annual alteration. Um, two and six, that is the definitional policy relating to income concepts and six which is the output uh, um, policy may need an amendment if a new benefit um, or tax is introduced. Three, which is the tax units, uh, um, or sometimes called assessment units, will rarely need amendment. And five, um, the expenditure variable definitional policies will only need amendment when a new data set is introduced into the model. Okay, now we'll go through some of these key definitional policies in a bit more detail and I will show you them within the model as we do that. So up rating. Um, this policy inflates the values in the input data set bringing them up to date and is used in conjunction with the up rating indices country tool and I'll show you that in just one second. So for example the underpinning, underpinning data set for TASMOD is currently 2012 and therefore for 2015 all values need to be adjusted for inflation and the default inflator is the CPI but other specific inflators can be specified for particular values so for example earnings in the input data set could be inflated by the annual change in average earnings if we have that information. So now I'm going to just flip across to the uh, model itself um, and then talk a bit more about the up rating. Now I mentioned um, the up rating indices. If you go to the tab country tools, the default tab is countries, but if you move to countries tools um, there are many um, options in countries, uh, country tools, but the up rating indices um, is one of the most important ones. So having navigated to country tools we can click up rating indices and within up rating indices you can immediately see that there are six different indices that have been uh, uh, um, inserted. Um, they're given names dollar F underscore um, means that they're factors, in, inflator factors and there's first of all one for the overall CPI and then because we undertake um, uh, VAT and excise duties on some of the expenditure items we have special factors for inflating um, expenditure and we've uh, it's a, they're subsets of the overall CPI so we have a, a CPI food CPI non-food and because of excise duties on alcohol, tobacco and fuel we have a CPI alcohol, tobacco and fuel. Now all of these CPIs, um, the CPI and all its components I should say, was actually rebased in December 2015 which equals 100 um, and so for the earlier years, um, 2011, 12, 13, 14 um, and even 15 because 15 is represented by June 2015, the actual um, in, in, in inflator is less than a hundred. Okay, and if I can then close that, take you back to the model itself and unpick the uprate definitional policy, you'll see that it has several um, uh, elements to it. First of all the function, fx is a function, we'll talk about those constantly throughout this training. The uprate policy has only one function called uprate and that has a number of so-called parameters and there are in this case five parameters. The first parameter specifies the data set and in the case of TASMA, we've only got one data set, and that's TZ 
underscore 2012 data. That's what it's called, and it's that represents the 2012 uh, HBS um, as prepared as an input data set. Then there's the default factor, which is the overall CPI, um, and that's uh, uh, um, used for anything that isn't specified separately. In fact, we do specify um, a, def a, a factor for YEM, which is employment income, and YSE, which is self-employment income, but because for Tanzania we haven't got a, a, a specific wage inflator, we simply use the CPI, uh, overall CPI, for those, those two. Okay, I'll close up that and then take us back to the presentation. Okay, the next definitional policy is constants. I mentioned before, constants are things that sometimes um, change annually. Um, and in the constants for um, TASMOD, we have got, for example, the presumptive uh, uh, um, tax upper limit, um, which is 20 million shillings per year. In, in fact, that hasn't changed year on year. It's uh, it's uh, been 20 million since uh, in 2012 and also in 2015. But it could have been changed, and and the easy place to store it is in a constant. Similarly, different elements of the uh, productive uh, uh, social security system, the PSSN, um, are actually itemised here. So we've got the um the the the, the basic um uh, um cash transfer um amounts for the child uh, 2000 um per month um for the adult and then there's the variable conditional cash transfer amounts and caps all of which will become clear when we go through the uh, different elements of the PSSN um Similarly, we've got in here the excise duties uh, for beer, wine, etc. Again, if I go across to the model, we can actually look again at the actual constants. All of them. And there are, there are more, as you can see, than was illustrated in the screenshot in the presentation and in fact we can add to this because there are other things within the um, model itself like the tax bands for example when we model income tax which are actually still within the actual tax policy itself but they could be removed uh, into the constants um, policy and in fact one of the exercises we're going to get you to do is actually moving some of the um, tax thresholds into constants. Okay. Income lists. Now, there are many different income concepts required when you simulate taxes and benefits. Um, and the handy thing about income lists is that they're a way of uh, listing together the income components included in a particular definition of income um, and they as it were create a new variable which is a composite of the different elements within the list within the income list and we use income lists within TASMOD quite uh, a lot we use it for um, computing income for taxes um, direct taxes like income tax, but also for VAT um, uh, and purposes as well. So the policy with the IL def underscore TZ specifies which income components relate to each income concept or income list. This is a, a policy that's not usually amended very often because, for example, the 
uh, elements of income that are taxable through the income tax system are fairly constant over time. But if they did vary, you'd need to vary the income lists. So again, I'll go across to the model itself, close up the constants we were just looking at, and rather look at the income lists. Um, so we have income lists uh, for taxable income um, used in the um, PAYE system, uh, which includes YEM, um, and um, but there's a deduction of allowances for NHIF employee contributions. So plus uh, means something that's added to the income list eel underscore taxably. Um, minus means it's subtracted. So because the contributions by the employee to the NHIF are actually deductible for income tax purposes, they're shown as a minus. Okay, um, and then there are lots of other standard income lists as well as income lists for specific uh, um, purposes. Again, when we explore the model in detail, we will go through those, but it's just to show you what an income list might look like. So, well, let me just show you original income, uh, as it has a lot of different income elements that are all added together, So, it, it's, which includes both employment income, other income, income from property, income from land, self-employment income, income from agriculture, income from private transfers. They're all added together and in this standard in income list eels underscore origin. Okay, I think that's all to say about income tax, uh, sorry, income lists for the time being. Um, they are very complex and um, can be looked at in more detail when we go through the model. Okay, this is a, a screenshot of what I've just been showing you. Tax units are groups of people, for example, individual, couple, family, household. And the tax units um, uh, uh, um, policy determines um, uh, uh, who is included in a particular tax unit and the tax unit themselves um, are, have to be specified in each policy. So personal income tax, for example, is calculated at the individual level, so the tax unit um, individual has to be included. Um, on the other hand, the productive social safety net fixed basic cash transfer depends on households being below the food poverty line which is a household level uh, uh, um, uh, 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 um, function. So each tax unit can be defined in various ways and it's described in the policy TUDEF underscore TZ and again this is a policy that's very rarely um, uh, um, amended. Okay, so can I just go and quickly show you the tax unit definitions? In fact, the ones that are used in um, TASMOD are the household, take a, a tax unit household, underscore TZ, the individual, and the couple. Um, the tax unit family which we have defined is actually not used in any current policies. Right now we'll move on from having looked at the definitional policies to look at the um, uh, actual tax policies. There's income tax, value added tax and excise duties. These can be extremely complex and they're only likely to need amendment if, for example, one's testing out new ways of financing um, uh, uh, um, social benefits um, or that um, the rules 
the tax rules have been changed by the uh, Revenue Authority. Um, and this does happen, but it doesn't happen um, all the time um, on, a, on a regular basis. So I think it would be good, therefore, to have a quick look at the tax policies. Again, we can walk through these in more detail when we, when we go through the model. But the tax policies are as follows. There's presumptive tax. Um, and presumptive income tax is actually what one might call a turnover tax. It's a tax that's payable on people operating small businesses under 20 million shillings per annum turnover. Um, and uh, they are not required to keep accounts and what they pay this so-called presumptive tax on is their turnover. They, they, it's not the net profit, which is what um, tax is normally payable on if you um, do keep accounts. And it's much easier to capture income from you know, informal traders, for example, um, through presumptive tax. The rates are much lower because obviously it's not on profit, it's only it's on absolute turnover. The, the rates are much lower than they would be um, for um, uh, um, larger enterprises where accounts are kept, or for PAYE, for example. So the eligibility criteria are that the individuals must have a turnover from self-employment um, a business that is less than the upper limit, which I've t said is 20 million, and must not be engaged in employment um, or agricultural activity. So we have um, a condition there that specifies that. And then the taxation of the turnover um, has um, a, a, a fairly low rates, like 3%. 3.75%, 4.5%, rising to 5.25%, depending on what level the turnover um, is uh, at. So that's the turnover tax. And then we have um, a more complicated income tax. Um, the income tax, we start with having two temporary or intermediate variables, one for PAYE, uh, um, people, i.e. people who are, uh, are employees in the, in the formal sector and then we have something called I underscore accounts which is an intermediate variable for self-employed people who keep accounts, i.e. not the people who uh, pay uh, uh, um, turnover tax. Then what we do then is calculate um, the um, amount of income which is taxable um, but we only take into account people in the formal sector so um, again we can go through this but the condition here is that the IFO which is informal, uh, L, excuse me, not IFO, LFO uh, which is uh, a labour market variable which has a value of 1 if somebody is in the formal sector and 0 if they're not in the formal sector. So if they're in the formal sector, then the income taken into account is that in the income list taxably, which we looked at above, which is actually YEM minus their NHIF contribution, and that goes into an output variable I underscore PAYE, which is uh, the... Uh, uh, um, amount that those individuals pay tax on. And then there's a another uh, um, calculation, this time to capture the people who are self-employed um, but are above the presumptive tax upper limit. So these are people um, who have got a turnover of greater than the upper limit, or um, that their um, uh, YEM, that's their 
employment's greater than zero um, and they do have self-employment income because remember even if you're below the presumptive upper limit if you're in um, uh, uh, employed earners employment or in agriculture this is the second one then you are uh, obliged to be uh, taxed um, in using the accounts uh, tax system and here YSE is the input variable which is the net um, profit rather than the um, the turnover which was uh, the input variable for the turnover tax um, and then um, the output variable is an intermediate variable I accounts which we uh, defined at the beginning here um, and that will come into taxation then finally the actual income that comes into the normal taxation is the PAY income plus the accounts income plus EEL underscore taxably two which we didn't go through in the income list but which is in fact um, income from agriculture and other income. Let's have a look at EEL taxably two which I think is here. So it's other income income from property, income from land, and income from agriculture, as I suspected. So all of that comes together um, and goes into the tax base variable TTB underscore S. And then it's the tax base into a, a variable on which the different tax bands are applied to calculate um, the income tax, TIN underscore S. Okay, again, we can go over this in more detail in class. I'm not going to talk about excise duty because it's particularly complex, um, or VAT, but that is again something we can spend some extra time about in class. Right, back to the presentation. So, just a brief word about the uh, benefit policies. This is the social transfers and the eligibility for public works program. Um, there are four uh, benefits programs currently simulated in TASMOD. There's the um, fixed basic cash transfer. They're all um, prefixed by PSSN for the pr pr productive social safety net. So there's a fixed basic uh, uh, cash transfer. The variable conditional cash transfer then there's a policy on cash transfer total because, um, as you'll see, there's a monthly amount um, over which, if, if someone's eligible to both the fixed basic cash transfer and the variable conditional cash transfer, those two amounts together can only come to a certain total. Um, I think it's offhand uh, 19,000 shillings a month. Um, and that's a cap. And we do that by having a separate um, transfer for that. And then finally, there's an eligibility for public works programmes. And as I've uh, uh, um, indicated earlier, these will be covered in, in, in more detail in a future session. OK. I've mentioned briefly the spine. But the spine is the list of policies simulated by TASMOD and the order in which they are simulated. So each policy is numbered and ordered in the main window. And I've, I've shown you that. Policies are executed in order. And it's imperative, for example, that policies which depend on information generated by an earlier policy are positioned after that policy. Um, and I, um, that's, that's really quite an important one. So let's go back to the model again. OK, so this is the spine order. And if, for example, um, and I think this may be a case in point. Um, yes, it is. If we look at the eligibility for public works, the eligibility condition for public works is that BSA underscore S is greater than zero. And BSA underscore S 
is actually the fixed basic cash transfer output variable. So the eligibility for public works has to come at point 14 after point 11, which is the um, fixed basic cash transfer. I hope that's clear. Now let me go back to the presentation. Well, in fact, that completes the presentation because now we'll spend time exploring the model, identifying different types of policy and becoming very familiar with the definitional policies which form the basic framework of the model. Um, and then in